The final thing we want to discuss for finite element is how to solve time-dependent equations using finite elements. We have previously focused on mostly steady-state equations, including Poisson's equation, the second derivative is equal to a known function, and we also touched the beam equation, which is again a steady-state equation. So the question today is, how do we discretize the time derivative using finite volume? Or how do we deal with the time derivative? So how do we transform uh, the PD with DDT in it into an OD as we did before? So we're going to use, again, a very simple example, just uh, adding a time derivative term onto the right-hand side of a, a Poisson's equation. So Poisson's equation would be the second derivative equal to a given function f. Today, we are going to look at a heat equation instead. OK, so we remember in finite element, how do we, discretize, how do we start in discretizing an equation? We started by multiplying this equation with a test function, right? With an arbitrary test function within a certain space, and thereby derive the weak form. All finite elements discretization, discretization started with a weak form. So if we multiply this equation with a v, so let's say, uh, let's use the bracket as inner product in the L2 sense. So the bracket is going to be integration over the entire space, v times du dt over dx would be equal to v uh, second derivative for all v, all v within a certain space that we don't know yet. So let's decide about it later. OK, so let's now write down what this inner product is. So first of all, we have v times du dt dx over, let's say, a one-dimensional space from a to b would be equal to the integral from a to b v times the second derivative of u. And if we want to use the same technique we used to deal with Poisson's equation, on the right-hand side of this equation, what should we do? Integrate by parts, right. So here we need some boundary conditions. Let's assume we have a simple boundary condition, ua equal to ub equal to 0. Then through integration by parts, we know that this v also has to satisfy the same bounded condition. So with integration by parts, the bounded terms gets removed through the bounded condition. And uh, we also are removing the second order derivative. And both u and v have a first order derivative in this bilinear form. Right? OK. And we also look at the left-hand side and realize that we are integrating only in space, not in time. So the time derivative can be removed, can be pulled out of the integral. So the left-hand side becomes d dt of an integral uv dx would be equal to minus integration of derivative of v derivative of u dx. Now we get two bilinear forms. One is integration of uv, the other integration of du dx times dv dx. Right? Both are bilinear forms, except for one bilinear form has a time derivative in it. OK? And to discretize this equation, we apply the same type of finite element discretization on both bilinear forms at the same time. What is that discretization? The discretization is restricting ourselves from an infinite dimensional space to a finite dimensional subspace. OK, so for discretization, so up to here, everything is analytical. So now let's switch to a discretized form. So now restrict, 
restrict u to be a summation of i goes from 1 to n of ui, which is now a number instead of a function, times phi i, which, uh, which are the basis functions of the finite dimensional subspace. Here, we can use the piecewise linear and continuous space, as we did before in Poisson's equation. Right? Okay, where the phi's, if we draw them, phi 1 is going to be like that, phi 2 is going to be like that in 1D, phi 3 is going to be like that. So these are the piecewise, uh, these are the basis functions of the piecewise continuous and piecewise linear functions. Well, the continuous and piecewise linear functions. Okay, now we also substitute the uh, phi j to our test function v because if this is satisfied for v equal to any of the phi j's this can be satisfied by the principle of linear superposition for all the v's that can be expressed as linear combination of phi j's so what we have is ddt of integral a to b u is now a linear combination v is now phi j dx is equal to minus of now the derivative of v which is phi j and the derivative of u which is a summation of ui the derivative of phi i the right hand side is exactly the same as we dealt with in Poisson's equation. We pull the summation and the ui out of the integral, thereby getting summation of i goes from 1 to n, ui times the integral of derivative of phi j times the derivative of phi i. This is exactly the matrix we call A, and it has, uh, this is the the j ith entry of the matrix j of the matrix a we used before to discretize the Poisson's equation right okay and the left hand side is a little bit different the left hand side we still pull all of these out but remember these ui's they are individual numbers at every t but these ui's are what makes the solution u time dependent. So ui's are actually functions of t, while the phi j and phi i, they are not functions of t. Therefore, we can pull the summation of ui's out of the integral, but we cannot pull it out of the time derivative. What we can pull off the time derivative is the remaining integral in space. So let's write it down, d dt of, and the summation can be pulled out, right? Summation can be pulled out, but like dui dt has to be uh, put onto the time derivative. And then we have integration of bi bj dx. And these are not in the time derivative because they are not functions of time. Now, this is another, this is the discretization of a different bilinear form. This bilinear form also is discretized into a matrix and let's call it MJI. Equating the left hand side to the right hand side, what we get is M, the matrix M, okay? Think of MJI multiplied by DUI dt. This is M times DU dt, where U is now the vector of U1, U2, U3, etc. So this is a vector times a matrix being the left hand side. And the right hand side is equal to minus A matrix times the vector U. Interestingly, we get, when we discretize this equation, we don't get a d vector u dt equal to a matrix times u. We get 
another matrix we call the math matrix in finite element times the time derivative of u equal to now this is something we call the stiffness matrix minus a times the vector u so in finite element jargon this is mass matrix this is stiffness the reason for that is uh, um, in the days even without computers people are trying to simulate complex structures not by using computer simulation but by connecting a bunch of mass with springs okay to study the vibration of buildings bridges for example and that is when when you have a, a, some mass uh, represented by a mass matrix and the stiffness of the springs represented by the stiffness matrix and uh, people used to solve these equations by hand until about uh, the 1940s when finally there are uh, electronic computers when people start to solve these equations using computers and uh, they are now able to solve huge equations uh, coming from structures but they still use the words mass matrix and stiffness matrix to represent uh, the the discretization of what is multiplied on, on the time derivative term and what is multiplied uh, to get the uh, multiplied on the on the state and what you can imagine is that if you have a wave equation so instead of a first order derivative on t you have a second order derivative on t right so then instead of heat equation you get wave equation everything follows exactly the same way this is because it doesn't matter in the in what we pull out and pull in uh, the derivatives and integrals it doesn't matter if the time derivative is first order or second order if it's a wave equation we have exactly the same mass matrix, exactly the same stiffness matrix, except for the du dt becomes d square u, dt square, right? Then we can use just a different method of time integration for the ODE to solve the wave equation. 